Good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening, good evening teacher. Hi, good to see you once again. Today is casual Monday. <laughs> All right, let's begin. I need to readjust myself in here because I moved uh, the computer and the camera is not helping me. Let's see, just give me a second. Yep, it's over there. Okay, that's better. Okay, thanks for your patience. Let's begin. Um, I'm going to share the screen with you now. Just give me a moment. Here we go. There it is. Okay. As usual, um, attendance list is first. Okay, when you hear your name, please let me know. We start with Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Present teacher. Welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar. Present teacher. Welcome. Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Present teacher. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Debbie Natalia Segura. Present. Okay, welcome. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Good evening, teacher. I'm here. Good evening. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. It's here, teacher. Welcome. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Present. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Jose Arturo Ramirez Bernal. Present teacher. Welcome. Jose Eraibin Enriquez. Jose Eraibin Enriquez. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. <coughs> Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. Present teacher. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Good evening, teacher. Hello, Rufino. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Present teacher. Welcome. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro José Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher, I'm sorry. Hello, welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure Sequeira. José Raibín Enríquez. Here, teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. 
Madeline Dayana, Cerón de Paz. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Nadia Isolina. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ok. All right, let's begin, everybody. Welcome once again. Good to see you after the weekend. Uh, this is, we have a chat entry here. Maritza says present. Okay, Maritza. Maritza, right here. Thank you. Attendance taken. All right, this is Advanced English 2, and uh, that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. This is session 13, and today is October the 16th of 2023. Remember, this is the last week, so if there's any work in the platform you haven't completed, this is the time to do it, okay? Um, all right, so what are we going to do? Well, we have to start the section, and we have the first part, just exploring creativity. Exploring creativity, Ex uh, creative professions, spare work. How much creativity do you do these jobs require? Number then from one, which is most creative to four, least creative, explain your choices. Okay, so the, the works, the jobs, I'm sorry, are chef, surgeon, and photographer. Surgeon, you know, people who perform operations, medical operations, okay, surgery on people. So you have an example. You have, I think a chef has to be the most creative. Inventing new dishes requires a lot of creativity. Okay, so in your opinion, and I would really, really like somebody to participate, uh, which of these, these jobs do you think requires the most creativity? Which ones do you think requires the person, the professional, to like uh, be more creative? Okay, uh, Jose Ramirez, and then Janet um, Janira. I guess so. Um, the pho photographer is photographer. Uh, uh, he must he must be uh, crea creative mm -hmm. must be creative mm, creative for for take photos different mm -hmm. place okay. okay so so basically uh, it requires a good deal of creativity you know to know when to take the photo and where to take the photo right that's the idea. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you for your participation. What about Janet Janita? Um, what do we have? Yes. I think the photographer needs too much creativity, but the chef mm -hmm. needs too much creativity to, to do many, many foods uh, mm. with uh, different ingredients and to... I don't know how to say emplatar. Emplatar, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> this uh, is the first this is the first time I hear that word in Spanish. I don't yeah, know what that means. The I'm sorry. Of the, of ah, the, of the, okay. The, the food. Okay, um, okay. So I think that's okay. what Okay, so the chef, right, needs needs creativity, you know, for the combination of ingredients and everything and also for the presentation of the dishes, right? That's it. Emplatar. Okay. All right. So this is the first time I hear that term. Okay. I'm expanding my Spanish vocabulary. Okay. Thank you. All right. One thing that I want like I would like to point out is the use of too much. Okay. Remember that um, when you say too much, you are implying that there is a problem with something. Okay. For example, if you say I, what's going on? Okay, I think, okay, for example, X job, okay, requires too much creativity. Okay, what you're saying is basically uh, something negative about it, because too much re uh, implies that there is an excess. I mean, something is wrong because because there is an because it is excessive. Okay, so when you say, I think, for example, being a chef requires too much creativity. Um, I get the idea, but at the same time, uh, you are given uh, a sort of negative connotation to the sentence. So maybe something better to say, I think requires, I think, for example, working as a chef requires, you can say, a lot of creativity. Okay, that sounds much more positive. Okay, because now you know that it's a big quantity, but it's not excessive. Okay, so that's the idea. So... Um, there you go. 
Okay, so uh, Jose and Janet, thank you for your participation. Does anyone else want to participate? Would you like to add to anything? What about a surgeon? Do you think a surgeon needs to be creative? Or is it not necessary? I don't know. What do you think? I, I believe a surgeon needs to be creative. I mean, of course, a surgeon needs to be Okay, let's let's see what uh, Ms. Romero has to say. Let's hear, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I agree with you. A surgeon need to be really create, um, creative. Because, mm -hmm. um, well, I watched the series Grey's Anatomy. Okay. And there were a lot of intervention that I think they were um, just giving in the moment. They were doing their job. Okay. And right. the intervention were in the books. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I believe that 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 series is based off uh, some books, right? Grey's Anatomy. It's it's one book or, or several books. I'm not really sure, but yeah, uh, yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. It refers okay. to the book, but there is a little change in the name. And Craig's um the series is with the uh, A. Mm -hmm. The last name of the uh, protagonist, mm -hmm. the main character, and uh, the book I think is with the uh, E. So this, okay. this, yeah. So this this is spelling uh, difference. All right. Okay. Well, yeah, totally. I agree. Uh, you know, some I've seen, for example, um, I don't know if you have seen the movie. There's a movie with with Kuva Gooding Jr. It's uh, Gifted Hands, which is uh, the life of uh, neurosurgeon Bert, Ben Carson, who's a real person, right? So there's Ben Carson, who's a neurosurgeon. And in the movie, you can see that uh, it's a kind of biographical movie, right? In the movie, you can see that that, that he all needs a lot of imagination and creativity to, you know, perform surgery in the brain of some kids, okay, who really, really, really need it. So... Um, it's of course a combination of, of of being intelligent, using their creativity and imagination, and also of course applying science to it. Right. So yeah, I I, I totally agree with everything you have told me. Some of you uh, say that being a photographer is the, the job that requires the most creativity. Some of you say the chef is. Some of you say the surgeon. I I, I totally agree. I mean, you have to be creative at whatever. Uh, occupation it is that you have because you will always find situations that are not let's say included in the book right in other words you have to deal with situations that are extraordinary and that's where you have to show your creativity just pretty much to do anything right even to be a teacher you have to try to be creative you have to try to come with come up with ways to you know teach your students and any job pretty much Okay, uh, thanks for your participation. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, advance on to the next part. Um, group work, okay, probably we can discuss it openly here. Which jobs might be the right for this kind of people? Discuss your answers. Okay, so this time you have uh, the description of people and then you have to suggest jobs that you consider are a good fit for these people. So someone able to think quickly, someone who thinks really quickly, what kind of job do you think will be appropriate for, to someone or for someone who is able to, you know, think very, very quickly? What do you think? Janet, Janita. Um, doctors, for example. A, a doctor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, true. They need okay. to, to think quickly because uh, the lights for persons are in, in your tents. Yeah. Especially when they work at emergencies, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah totally. Okay, they need to, to think quickly. Uh, and also, uh, you need people who don't uh, get too influenced by their feelings, right? For example, if somebody freezes, right? They're like, <gasps> I don't know what to do. Okay, that's probably not the best attitude to take. Well, it's not an attitude. It's more like a reaction, actually. But yeah, you need someone to, you know, think coldly and, and, and quickly and clearly, okay, right at the moment. Sounds good. Thank you, Janet. What about number two, a person looking for adventure? Okay, what, what kind of job do you think is, is best for a person looking for adventure? What do you think? Sounds a bit difficult. 
being an officer? Well, a police officer? Uh huh. Okay. All right. Although being a police officer also involves a lot of paperwork. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's like part of the time, it will probably uh, be kind of like an adventure. And some other times, it's a lot of paperwork. Okay, let's let's hear what Janina Mendoza has to say about it. Thank you, Ms. Romero. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Ah, welcome. I'm taking I, your attendance, by the way. Okay. Thank you. All right. For me, a person looking for adventure is like a um, uh, for, for photographer or natural. Ah, like the... Okay, okay. A nature photographer. Geography. Okay, yeah, sounds yes. Sounds good. Uh-huh. Okay. Great. Okay. Na nature uh, will be something like a wildlife photographer, they call them. Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Wildlife photographer sounds, sounds like, like nice adventure. I mean, you have to feel passionate about nature and animals and plants and all the stuff. Okay. To do that. But yeah, it sounds like. It's an amazing good. job. It I sounds think. like an amazing mm -hmm. job. Totally. You know, um, very recently I was, I was telling my wife that I, uh, I don't know. I, I have started to feel some sort of, of interest, a kind of fascination for plants. Okay, so this every time I see a new yeah. plant, I get like kind of excited. I go like, oh my God, what is this? Never seen this. And I have an app on my phone. You might have heard of it. Well, probably you have, probably you haven't. It's the name of the, uh, what is the name of it? I can't remember. I'm about to tell you about an app I have on my phone and I can't remember the name of it. It's... Um, <coughs> Ah, uh, I forgot. I'm gonna put it in the group, okay? When I when I when I check my phone, but yeah, it's it's an app that is amazing because you can take a photograph of a plant or an animal, and it will identify the species. It's very cool, okay? So I have seen I have I, I have seen insects, I've seen uh, arachnids, I have seen lizards, and and amphibians and many types of, of animals. Every time I see one new animal, I just go like, oh my god, I have to. You know, take a picture and the app identifies the animal. It identifies the species of plant or animal. It's, it's, it's really cool. It's like Pokemon. If you ever watch Pokemon, the protagonist had a, a device that could identify the type of Pokemon. So it's kind of similar, okay, but, you know, with, with real species. But I forgot the name of it. Ah, yeah, I remember. The name is uh, Seek. That's the name of the app. Okay, so if, if you're interested, you can download it, install it on your phone, and, and then when you see a plant or an animal that you don't know and you want to know the name of it or more information, you just take a picture and it identifies it for you. It's really cool. Okay, that's how I realized or, or I learned the name of the plants that I just put here in my front garden, okay, which is a very nice thing to do. So um, they brought dinner. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a very cool thing. Okay, Jose and then Nadia, uh, do you want to uh, participate for the first, uh, the, the same item, number two, or do you want to uh, comment on number three, Jose? Uh, um, I would like to comment on number two. Um, okay, okay. For for um, the profession is um, biologist. Biologist, all right. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. For someone looking for adventure, sounds, sounds, sounds cool. Okay. Yeah. Again, yeah. uh, right, to, to, to each their own. I remember that when I was in, in, in high school, I don't know if it was the teacher that I had probably, but I didn't enjoy biology that much. But now that I'm mentioning this to you, right, that I'm, 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 I have this new uh, interest in plants and stuff, it's, I think it could be an, an interesting, you know, exciting job. Okay, uh, Nadia, what about you? Would you like to comment on number two or shall, shall we yeah. go on? No? Okay, number two. Me too. Me too. I comment the okay. sentence number two. Right. In my opinion, um, the job for the person looking for adventure is guide tour. Tour guide. Tour guide. Uh -huh. Sorry, tour guide. Okay, sounds good. Would you like to be a tour guide? Me. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I like. I like me the new new places. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a good opportunity for this. 
Okay. Okay. That sounds really cool. All right. Yeah. I mean, being a tour guide, I mean, uh, to be a tour guide, you have to be able to speak probably more than just Spanish and English, probably French and Italian and maybe Portuguese too, <laughs> or something like that. I mean, it depends on the people you're receiving and the people you're showing around. But um, but yeah, it sounds, sounds really good. Okay. Being a tour guide sounds, sounds cool. Sounds like a great opportunity to meet new people, right? And, and get involved with uh, the cultural traditions of others, you know, visitors. Sounds great. What about number three? Uh, people good with their hands, people with an ability in their hands. What kind of job is suitable for this for, for people who are good with their hands? If you want to participate, just raise your hand. We're having good discussion right now. I'm happy to hear your voices. What do you think? People good with their hands. Debbie Segura. Can be a dentist. Okay, yeah, absolutely. A dentist, yeah, you have to be precise with your hands when you're a dentist or pretty much any 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 sort of doctor or surgeon or anyone who does like some sort of surgical intervention. You have to be good. <laughs> if you're if you're clumsy with your fingers, probably it's not not a good choice for profession. Yeah, I agree. Uh Biden, what do you think? It's a painter using that their hands yeah absolutely a painter basically is an artist basically all forms of artisan right or or, or craftsman okay yeah painter. those people need to mm -hmm. yeah exactly they need to be you know uh skilled with the hands okay totally okay good i agree thank you what about number four someone needed job security in other words somebody who is not afraid of losing their job, someone who needs job security. Pretty much everybody, but <laughs> anyway, but but uh, what kind of job do you think can provide job security? This is a tough question. I can't think of anything right now. Can you? <laughs> Debbie, okay, Debbie. Um. I'm not sure, but I think being a teacher. A teacher? They, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many teachers do I know? I know several. Um yeah, yeah, totally. You need you need job stability. Though sometimes it's um uh, depends on where you work, basically. I mean, if you work in a school, I believe there's a good chance you can you can get some, you know, job stability. If you don't work in a school, if you work in an academy, for example, and you work, um, let's say, uh, just uh, you work with groups, okay, for example, and you get paid by the hour, uh, you get some stability, but but sometimes you get groups, sometimes you don't. It all depends on, on, on demand. If there is no demand, okay, then you have no job. You have no work to do. So, uh you have a job, yeah, but you don't have work. Therefore, sometimes that happens. And I, I can tell you this because I've been a teacher for now 18 years. And it's happened a lot of times, a lot of times that that you get a lot of groups. And, and there are certain times during the year that people don't want to study or they are not willing to invest their money. And during those months, it's, it's difficult to, you know, to have some steady uh, work to be done. Okay. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. A teacher needs, uh, you know, job stability. That's for sure. Okay. What about number five, a person trained in music? What will be a perfect job for someone trained in music? Janet, Janita. Uh, singing coach. A singing, a singing coach. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. A singing coach. If, if the person is, is good at singing and, and, and of course, if they, uh, if if they have you know the capacity to teach others okay yeah totally okay okay could be one um, another one that i can think of is like you know working in an orchestra right a philharmonic something like that sounds really cool right like every country has like their own orchestra so a person training music sounds like a really good fit for an orchestra or band member right it's kind of like a dream for everybody at some sort of some point in our lives, right? I, I guess everybody has like experienced uh, the desire to have a band. I have, okay? I think it will be a really cool job, but of course you need to be really good at playing an instrument. <laughs> anyway, 
which I am not, unfortunately. I play the guitar, but I'm not good. I mean, I can play a few songs, but that's about the extent of it. What about number six? A person with a good voice, okay? That's like a, you know, a, a vocal co coach, okay, a singing coach. But what about this one, a person with a good voice? I have a cousin who is great at singing, and, and this guy is, is often invited to events, and he gets paid for singing. He sings a lot like, like his, his, his voice sounds like that of um, this famous uh, singer from Mexico. What's his name? Luis Miguel. <laughs> kind of sounds like it. And it's funny because his name is also Luis. So um, I have this cousin who, who has a really cool singing voice. And, and, and again, he gets invited to lots of events, gets paid for it. And, and it's like singing around. Looks cool. I mean, nice job if you can get it and if you have the ability for it. What do you think? What about a person with a good voice? What, what do you think will be like a perfect job for that person? Janira Mendoza. Uh, I think, teacher, uh, uh, someone who uh, double the voice of movies. Ah, okay. So you 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 mean a uh, uh, voice actor? Yes. That's what they call him, voice actor. So it's not just a good voice for you know singing, but a vo good voice in general, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Too bad that we don't have that in El Salvador. It would be nice to be a voice actor. Sounds sounds like a really cool job. I have, you know, it's interesting that you mention it because I, 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 I mean, I don't know them personally, right? <laughs> but I've seen them on YouTube, right? And I, I know the names and, and, and I know about, you know, several voice actors that are famous, particularly those that are from Mexico that are very talented. Okay, and, and, and it's fascinating. And, and that's a kind of job that most people don't notice. When you go and you see a movie or a cartoon or something and you hear the voices in Spanish, I mean, you enjoy the movie, but, but most people don't think about the people who, you know, provided those voices, okay? And that they do an important job, okay? They, they're in, 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 to some extent, the reason why people enjoy those movies so much. Uh, Alejandro. In my opinion, teacher, a person with a good voice could be a, a an excellent neurolinguist programmer. Neurolinguist programmer. Okay, I yes. have, I've heard about this. Okay, neurolinguist programmer. It's um, uh, I remember I used to teach a man who was a a doctor in psychology. He used to tell me about uh, neurolinguistics and programming and stuff. It's it's quite complex, okay? And I don't remember much about it, but yeah, it sounds like a good choice for someone with a good voice. Okay, thank you, Alejandro. Great contribution. Uh, I believe Janet wanted to participate too. Okay, Janet. Um, this is an uh, anecdote. An anecdote. Yeah. Okay. Um, when we was on, on uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. Uh, I have had uh, seen uh, many things to do because I had uh, I I stayed without um, work. Mm -hmm. You were unemployed. And, yeah, me yeah, too. Uh, I know what that feels like. <laughs> yeah, and so one of my of my chances was mm. um, doing work with my boys. Okay. Online. Okay, sounds great. So like um you you can to read uh some paragraph or a script um, yeah script mm -hmm. so and you can to to work with your voice you can work with your voice okay yeah yeah i've heard that i've heard that some people can i mean they just receive the text they read it and then they use their voice and websites and stuff and they get paid for that so you got paid for recording your voice yeah okay Great. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a good third job. <laughs> All right. Now, when I was uh, during the pandemic, I, I was out of work too. I was basically unemployed. And I think I told you, I survived by writing, basically. 
Okay, I, I survived by 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 writing uh, on a, on a sort of blog, a platform for writers. It's kind of like YouTube, but for writers. So that's how I made enough money to survive. It was almost like a miracle. To this day, I don't understand how that worked, but I believe God made a miracle right there and, and gave me enough money to to get by there in 2020 because I was totally broke. Okay, for teachers, it was hard. Let me tell you. Okay, we got completely out of. It was really hard, but at the same time, it, it's it's kind of like a blessing in disguise, if you know what I mean, because that uh, the pandemic pretty much opened the door to this kind of, you know, um, education, which is online education. Before the pandemic, you know, studying online wasn't really that 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 popular, but after that, it became mainstream. Now we're studying like that. Okay. Before the pandemic, this was uh, very limited. Okay, this was very limited, and now it's just it's it's another option, which I'm thankful for. Okay, so anyway, all right, everybody, thank you for your participation. That's really good. Okay, uh, to hear your voices and to hear your opinions. Uh, let us continue. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do here? Okay, this is part of the starting point too. Is creative qualities. What qualities do creative people usually have? Okay, complete the chart with the correct nouns or adjectives. Okay, so basically what you have to do here, I I'm going to test your vocabulary. There is the noun and there's the adjective equivalent. Noun, adjective, noun, adjective. For example, you have the noun, curiosity. Curiosity, the adjective is curious. Okay, the curiosity, that's the noun, la curiosidad, right? And the adjective is curious, curioso, curiosa, curiosos, curiosas, okay? So what I want you to do is, in this case, you have decisiveness, okay? You have to give me the adjective. Now you have the adjective, determined and discipline. You have to tell me the noun. What is it? Okay, so um, I'm going to give you four minutes okay i'm going to give you four minutes for you to complete this and after that we're going to check answers together all right so remember you have the noun curiosity what's the adjective curious you have the noun decisiveness what is the adjective you have to tell me what it is in this case you have the adjective determined you have to tell me what the noun is and so on right there's the second column right here and the third column right here let's do this four minutes starting right now You can use your dictionaries if you want. This exercise is not particularly easy.
All right, time's up. What do we have? Ah, before that, and also to give you some time to finish if you haven't, um, I just, I would like to, you know, call attendance one more time. Is Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva online tonight? Andrea Michelle, Daisy Carolina, Daisy Carolina Rodriguez, no. Um, Gabriela Loure, Sequeira Bernal. Gabriela Loure, Sequeira Bernal. Madeline Dayana, Cerón de Paz. Madeline Dayana, Cerón de Paz. Nadia Isolina. Rodríguez. Present teacher. Welcome. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. All right. Okay, let's check the answers. So uh, we have the noun curiosity. The adjective is curious. What about decisiveness? What's the adjective? You know the answer, please raise your hand. What is it? Nadia. And in my opinion, the adjective is decided. Okay, yes and no. Decided is what we call a participle adjective, okay? But there is one that is more appropriate in this case. All right, so um, uh, Jose, what do you have? Decisive, teacher. Decisive, yeah, that's more like it. Okay, there is decisive. Now, decided is, is true. It's a form of adjective, but it's a participle adjective. Okay, it's it's pretty much a past participle used as an adjective, but the adjective form specifically is decisive. So thank you. Thanks for your participation. What about the adjective determined? What is the noun? What is the noun for determined? Janet Janira. Uh, maybe determination? Determination, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's right. Thank you very much. What about disciplined? What will be the noun? Nadia. Discipline. Uh, well, disciplined is, is the adjective. Disciplined. No. What will be Di the noun? Discipline. Di discipline. Without D. Aha, okay. Oh, man, it's raining. I think I have to close the window. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's di discipline, but the pronunciation is discipline. Okay, yeah, that is correct. Thank you. What about the next one? You have uh, innovation. What's the adjective? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Eraivin, Jose. Jose Eraivin, sorry. <laughs> innovative. Okay, good. Just the pronunciation is more like innovative. Innovative. Sorry. Innovative. Uh -huh, yes. Now don't worry. I used to make the same mistake. <laughs> it's 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 actually common. So in innovative. That's for innovations. Innovative. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. What about knowledge? Knowledge is the noun. What will be the adjective? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. For those who have already participated, you can uh, lower your hand. Debbie Segura. If I'm not wrong, is yes, knowledgeable. Yeah. Uh, knowledgeable, okay. A knowledgeable person is a person who knows a lot. That's knowledgeable. Byron, what about the next one? The adjective is motivated. What's the name? Mm, no, not exactly. A motive is, is it's a noun, yeah, but it's not the noun we're looking for. But but thank you for your participation, Byron. What about Nadia? Then Alejandro, then David, then Jose. So Nadia. Is um, motivation. Motivation. Yeah, that's right. Motivation. Then you have motivated. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Now, uh, Byron said motive. Yeah, motive is a noun, definitely. But but it's not the noun that goes with the adjective motivation. Motivated, sorry. It's motivation. Okay. Uh, Nadia, what about the next one? Original is the adjective. What's the noun? Um, original. An original is an adjective, actually. It's the opposite of original. But in this case, we're looking for a noun. Uh, thank you for participating. Nadia, what about you, Alejandro? What do you have? 
No, <laughs> I don't you don't, know have, you don't have this one. You don't have this yeah, one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, but keep your hands up. Okay. Uh, Jose Raivin, what do you have? Maybe origin. Origin is a noun, definitely, but it's not the noun we're looking for. Okay. It's it's more intimately, you know, uh, associated with the word original. Who knows the answer? Please raise your hand if you know. Original. Uh, What's the teacher? Is Who, who's... originally? Originally. Originally is an adverb, not a noun. So we cannot use it. Okay, but thank thank you for trying. I mean, this is good. People are trying. Janet? Uh, maybe originality. That's correct. It's originality. Okay. La originalidad. Okay. Then the adjective original. Original. So yeah, originality. That's correct. Thank you, Janet. And everybody, thanks for, for trying also. Okay, what about the noun passion? What's the adjective? Do, do, do you know, Alejandro? No? Passionate. Raise your hand? Passionate. Yes, yes. Yeah, passionate. passionate. That's correct. Okay, passionate. that's 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 the adjective, passionate. Uh, a, a person who's passionate feels passion. Very good. What about patience? What's the adjective for patience? Jose Raibin. And then Jenny. Patient. Patient. Yeah, that's right. A person who is patient, you know, shows patience. That is correct. What about the noun perceptiveness? Okay, what's the adjective? Perceptual. Uh, sorry, Jenny. Perceptual. Perceptual. Yeah. Um, no, nah, not really. It doesn't. Oh. It doesn't really finish like that. I mean, it's it's okay. it's different. But thank you for participating. Who knows the answer? Please raise your hand. Debbie. Perceptive. Perceptive. Okay. Yeah. Debbie Segura. Yeah. She's sure about the answer. So it's perceptive. That's correct. Very good. And the last one, resourceful. Okay. What's the noun for that? Resolve. Who's speaking? Ah, not, not, Nadia, right? Yes, teacher. Okay, what is it? I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Resolve it? Mm, no, sorry, that's not the word. But thank you for participating. Who knows this one? This is probably the longest word. Jose Raibin. Resource. Resource is a noun, that's true, but it's not the noun we're looking for. It's a bit more complex than that. Okay. Uh huh. Any ideas, or do you give up? No idea. Okay, then. So I'll give it to you. Resource resourcefulness. That's it. Resourcefulness is the quality of being resourceful, okay? Resourcefulness. Um, before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary? If you have questions, this is a good opportunity to ask. Is the vocabulary clear? Only the, the, the meaning of resourceful and resourcefulness because a resourceful. Okay, okay. Is, re it's it's uh -huh. it's new. Okay, and it's it's not very common. Okay, resourceful is a person who has many resources to do a job or to do something. To give you an idea, for example, imagine. Um, all right, uh, teachers. Teachers somehow need to be resourceful. What is the meaning of that? I mean, the meaning is that if you're a teacher, you're not just supposed to. Tell your students, okay, everybody, open your book. And then you work with the book only. Now, when a teacher is resourceful, for example, a teacher has like many places where to get information and resources to work with, not just the book, okay? Uh, to oh, be resourceful okay. also implies that you have to use a lot of your imagination, your creativity, and, and, and also your intelligence to come up with new ways of doing things. If you do that, then you are resourceful, okay? And resourcefulness is the noun, okay? It's, to be honest with you, I, I would not know the translation into Spanish. Hmm. 
be okay. very resourceful, Thank you. But, but you get the idea. <laughs> okay, Alejandro. Yes, teacher. Uh, I don't know what's the meaning of uh, the noun decisiveness. Decisiveness. Decisiveness decisive. is, the, is the quality of being decisive. Okay, so a decisive person is a person who knows what he or she wants. That's decisive. Okay, decisiveness. Um, if you had to translate it into Spanish, there would be something like decisión, o sea, la cualidad de ser decisivo, o de poder okay. decidirse. Okay, it's just this this okay. decisiveness. Mm -hmm. And what about what with decision, for example? Ah, but the thing is that decision is something different because it's not a quality. A decision is a noun. It's like you have two choices. For example, you choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. That's a decision. You want Coca-Cola or Fanta? Choose one. Okay, that's your decision. Okay. Or you decided to study English. Okay, you made a decision right there. Okay, that's, that's it. Okay. But when you say decisiveness, that's more like the quality of being decisive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like okay. curiosity is the quality of being curious. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. So, um, any other questions about the vocabulary? No more questions. Okay. Well, let's continue. We don't have much time. We only have 12 minutes. So, let's do this. Lesson objective. This is the first lesson objective. Okay. Uh, Janira, do you have a question? Yes, teacher. About the Knowledgeable, now, knowledgeable. A knowledgeable, a knowledgeable person is someone who knows a lot of things. Pretty much the opposite of ignorant. Mm, un sabio. Mm. Aha, a person who knows a lot. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, in, teacher, in resourcefulness. Resourcefulness is the quality of being resourceful. In other words, the the, the capacity of of coming up with different ways of doing things and many in having a lot of resources to do things. In other words, you are not very limited. You have many things at your disposal to do a job. And that also includes your imagination, your experience, your your capacity for innovation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So resourcefulness is basically the capacity of doing that, is the quality of being resourceful. Teacher, does exist any rule uh, for create for now on the, an adjective? Unfortunately, no. Okay, there are prefixes and suffixes. But the thing with, in this case, prefixes and suffixes is that they vary greatly depending on um, uh, depending on, on, on the word we're using. Okay, sometimes, you know, you will find words that end in, for example, N-E-S-S, -S, like perceptive, perceptiveness, resourceful, uh -huh. resourcefulness. Even the word resourceful has a, has a suffix. Normally, the word comes from resource. That's the first noun. And then if you want to make that noun an adjective, then you add F-U-L, and now you have resourceful. And now you have an adjective. But then if you want to turn that adjective into another noun, you can add N-E-S-S, -S, which is, uh, turns the word into resourcefulness. However, there are many different you know, suffixes that you can use. And there isn't a very specific rule on what you have to use on one occasion and, what you, and, and which one you have to use in another one. It all depends on the words. Basically, you need to memorize mm -hmm. them. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Sorry Thank you, teacher. That. You're welcome. You just give me a second. I need to send a very quick message here. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Okay. Um, let us continue. Okay. So lesson objective. By the end of this lesson, participants will practice using relative clauses. Sorry, I'm waving my hand like this, but I have like a sandwich in here and there's a fly around, okay? They served me dinner while I was teaching. <laughs> so uh, I'm not supposed to eat while teaching. So I just, you know, scaring the fly away. So um, let's take a look at this, okay? So reduce relative clauses. You can shorten a relative clause by dropping the relative pronoun and the verb. How? Take a look. You can say someone who is or someone that is able to think quickly 
might be a good surgeon. That's a complete sentence, but you can reduce it. There's a possibility of reducing the relative clause by just eliminating a few words. How does that work? Take a look. You can say someone, and then you eliminate who or that, and those are the relative pronouns. And you can also eliminate the verb be, and it works. You can say someone able to think quickly might be a good surgeon. There's a very similar process that you do in Spanish. You can say, alguien que es capaz de pensar rápidamente puede ser un buen cirujano. Or you can simply say, alguien capaz de pensar rápidamente es un, puede, podría ser un buen cirujano. So you can do the same thing in Spanish. Just by eliminating a few words, you don't change the meaning of the sentence. And in this case, you have a relative clause. And in the relative clause, you can eliminate, if you want, the relative pronoun and the verb be, and it still makes sense. And you can use it like that, which is pretty cool. Second example, a person who is looking for adventure could be a private detective or a person that is looking for adventure could be a private detective. So what do you know? You can eliminate the relative pronouns who or that, and also you can eliminate the verb be, and it still makes sense. You can say a person looking for adventure could be a private detective, just like that. A person looking for adventure, okay, could be a private detective, okay? A uh, third example, a person who is trained in music or a person that is trained in music might be a good musician. Again, you can eliminate the relative pronoun that or who and the verb be from the relative clause. And then you get a person trained in music might be a good musician. Okay? It's actually not very complicated. It's just about, you know, dropping uh, the relative pronoun and the verb be. Okay? A moment. Okay. Um, let us continue. You can also drop who or that and change the verb to the gerund. Like this. Someone who needs job security or someone that needs job security might not want to be a pop musician. So instead of saying who needs or that needs, you can say someone needing. That's how you do it. If you want to change the verb, okay, you can simply replace it by the gerund form, which is the ing form of the verb. So what do you have here? You have uh, someone needed needing job security might not want to be a job musician. Okay, the same thing will happen in this case if you say I'm going to type it in the screen here. It's pretty much the second example from the first part. You can say a person who is looking for adventure, blah, 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 could be a good private detective. So what do you do? You say a person, let's, uh, maybe not who is looking, let's say who looks in general, okay, for adventure. So instead of using the relative pronoun who and the verb, you can simply say a person looking, okay, for adventure. And then you go, you have the rest. Okay. A person looking for adventure could be a, a private detective. All right. Same thing happens here. Someone who needs job security or someone that needs job security, you can eliminate the relative pronoun that or who, and then the verb, and you just use the, 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 the gerund form of the verb, someone needing job security. Okay. That's how it goes. Now, uh, for the next one, you have in many relative clauses, who and that has, okay, can be replaced with, okay. For example, a person who has a good voice or a person that has a good voice could be a good TV journalist. Well, if you have who has or if you have that has, you can simply replace it with with. Okay, you can replace it with the uh, preposition with. You can say someone who has a good voice or someone that has a good voice becomes someone with a good voice. It's a very similar process that we do in Spanish. You say, alguien que tiene buena voz. You just say, alguien con buena voz. Okay, it's pretty much the same idea. So you do the same in English. Okay, before we continue, do you have any questions about the grammar right here up to this point? No, sir, everything is clear. 
Everything's clear. Okay. Crystal clear. Clear as water. From a Selwate River. <laughs> okay. Let's do this then. We have an activity right here. Rewrite these sentences with reduced relative clauses, then compare with a partner. This is knowledge check 4.2 for those who have completed it or have started working on it. Uh, you might be familiar with it. So you have, for example, someone who hopes to be a chef should get the proper training. So you have who hopes, who hopes. You can eliminate this who, and you can turn the verb hopes into the ing form, the gerund form, and you say someone hoping to be a chef should get the proper training. What about number two? Anyone who wants to be an actor needs both talent and luck. What do you have? Getting tired of, you know, scaring the fly away. So um, number two, anyone who wants to be to be an actor needs both talent and luck. Janet Janita. Anyone way, wanting to be an actor needs to both talent and luck. That is correct. Anyone wanting to be an actor needs both talent and luck. Ana, disculpar que estoy haciendo esto. Estoy espantando una mosca. I'm sorry. I have food right here. Anyway, number three, Reina Isabel. That is Miss Romero. I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> a person working as a comedian is always looking for new ways to make people laugh. That's correct. A person working as a comedian is always looking for new ways to make people laugh. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Romero. Rufina Mirka, people who are clever enough to get inside the mind of a criminal will make good detectives. Uh, uh, people clever, people clever enough to get signed. The my my a criminal would will make good detectives. Good detectives, okay. People clever enough to get inside the mind of a criminal will make good detectives. Good, thank you, Rufino. That is correct. What about number five? Anyone who dreams of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to do a lot of hard work. How about this one? How about this one? Me, teacher, Noemi. Ale, Al, Alejandro, okay, Alejandro raised his hand first and then Noemi, you get, you get the next one. Okay, thank you. Alejandro. Anyone dreaming of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to do a lot of hard work. That is correct. Okay. Anyone dreaming of becoming a champion athlete has to be prepared to do a lot of hard work. That's right. Okay. Uh, Noemi and then Byron. Noemi, you get number six. Byron, you get number seven. Someone who is interested in classical music might be a good musician. Number six. Yes. Someone responsive, responsive for a large uh, staff. Sorry, that's number seven. Uh, I, I need you to, to go with number six. Someone who is interested in classical music might be a good musician. Ah, are, are you in the platform by any chance? Number five. I believe, I believe, aha, I believe you're, 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 you're getting answers from the platform. Aha, yeah, the, I'm I'm getting this from the material, from the, from the uh, manual. Uh, I believe there are like a couple more items right there. So um, let's see, 4.2, just let me check, should be quick. Um, okay, so let's, let's try this one, right? Someone who is interested in classical music might be a good musician. Let's see, uh-huh, it's not here. Or, or you can get number seven, I mean, no problem. Okay, uh, Byron, what about number six? Do you have it? Someone responsible for a large staff has to be able to be cre creative with scheduling. With scheduling. Okay. Someone or a person responsible for a large staff has to be able to be creative with scheduling. That is correct. But I cannot show it to you right now because it's... Uh... Okay. Okay. So, uh, Byron... <laughs> 
the number six. Someone yeah, interested six. in classical music might be a good musician. Someone musician. interested in classic in the latest music. Oh man, I got the wrong answer right here. Why do I have the wrong answer? Ah, okay, let me correct that. It's embarrassing. Okay, someone interested in uh, let's see class oops classical music might be a good musician okay so someone interested in classical music might be a good musician and then what uh, noemi said okay is a person responsible for a large staff has to be able to be creative with scheduling okay there you go those are the answers so everybody thank you for participating um here very quickly the knowledge check Okay, these are the answers, which is pretty much the same exercise. I believe there are a few variations. Okay, so you have them on the screen right now. I'm going to share this with you. Okay, so you can have it just in case this, this exercise is giving you trouble. Let me find it. Um, right here. Okay, now you have it on WhatsApp. All right, everybody, just let me call the attendance one more time and then we will finish the class. So, uh, what happened? Okay. Um, Andrea Michel Garcia Selva. Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Yes, Janira. Teacher, um, I don't understand why in the um, uh, in the form uh, we don't use we don't use clevering. Because clever it's is clever. because clever is not a verb; it's an adjective. You can change to ing form only if you have a verb, but in this case, clever is not a verb. It's an adjective, so you need to use it as it is. That's the reason. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what you what we have done is we have eliminated eliminated the uh, relative pronoun who and the verb be, and then we have um, the adjective clever. So people clever enough to get inside the mind of a criminal will make good detectives. It's like Spanish when you say personas que son suficientemente listas. Para entrar en la mente del criminal, etcétera, etcétera. Sí. Personas suficientemente listas para entrar en la mente del criminal. Clever es listo. I'm sorry? Clever es listo. Ah, listo, intelligent, that's clever. Mm -hmm. That's right. Is the same situation about uh, number six? Number six, yes, correct. Because responsible mm -hmm. is an adjective too. Same situation, exactly. Mm -hmm. Good observation. News about the structure of the sentences are the same, but the answers are different. Uh, not exactly. The thing is, when you have, for example, who in a verb, like who hopes, who wants, who works, who dreams, mm -hmm. in that case, you can change the verb to the ing form. Someone mm -hmm. hoping, some anyone wanting, right? Yes. A person working, anyone dreaming. But when you have who, the verb be, and an adjective, then you just eliminate who and the verb be, and you keep the adjective. Like in number four, mm -hmm. people who are clever yes. enough, people clever enough. In number six, someone who is responsible, someone responsible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got That's it. This it I got it. Okay, Thank great. You. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, uh, Gabriela Loure, is Gabriela Loure here? Not tonight. Madeline Diana, is Madeline Diana Seron de Paz online? Probably not. Okay, everybody. Consejo, ya estamos en lo último. Por favor, traten de no perder clase. Traten de conectarse, incluso si, si digamos, no pueden eh, participar en clase, por lo menos conéctense de un teléfono o algo, porque todos esos minutos cuentan y ya estamos en la recta final para poder completar el porcentaje de participación. Así que eh, traten de no faltar a clase. Ok, everybody. Um, 
thank you very much. I will continue with the same uh, grammar topic tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye